All right. The main thing you need to do is it's always helpful to do a table of values, guys. I think a table of values is a really easy thing to do for this. However, a table of values can get you messed up if you don't know where the vertex is. So to graph an absolute value, I believe it's imperative to know what the parent graph looks like and then know what the transformations are going to do. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to write up the parent graph. You guys have to know the parent graph for the absolute value of x. It goes up 1 over 1, left 1 up 1. Up 2 over 2, left 1, left 2 up 2. So it's a nice V, and it looks like that. Okay? I always think it's just important. It's in your notes, but sometimes maybe when you're doing graphing, you might want to just write it in there, write it on your test or your homework, just so you remember what the parent graph looks like. Now the next thing is we need to know where's our vertex. So before we pick a table of values to determine the points, we need to know what is, what is happening to our graph. So on my new graph, the one that's going to be the answer, let's look at the transformations. So the first one is we have a transformation inside the function, and we have a transformation outside the function. When it's inside the function, that tells us to do what? Shift left or right. So when it's plus 1, that tells us to go where? Shift left, right? Minus 2 tells us to? Shift down. Very good. So the only point, I, I mean, I could use any one of these points, but I always like to use the dot at 0, 0. So that's telling me to go left 1, down 2, right? So this now point has shifted left 1, down 2. Then what is that negative? Yes? Huh? Yeah. Mm -hmm. And this tells you to go down 2. Yep. So I'm going to go down to what does that negative sign outside of the function tell you to do? Reflect about the x-axis, right? So instead of it now opening upwards, it's now going to open down. So if you wanted to sketch the graph, it would look something like that, right? You know it open, You know it's left one, down two, and it opens downward. Yes. Yeah, well, it, we're going to talk about it. What does the 3 do? Remember, what does the 3 do? 3 is going to dilate it, right? It's going to either compress it or um, stretch it out, correct? So when a is the absolute value of a, we don't worry about the negative. It's the absolute value of that number. If it's greater than 1, what does it do? Stretch or compress? Stretches it vertically. But you could say compresses it horizontally. So what we could also say, sometimes to make it easier, we just say it's skinnier, right? It looks skinnier than the parent graph. Now, how do we know what the points are? Unfortunately, I like to go back to the table of values to check it. So I know that this point is at negative 1, negative 2, right? What we can do is to pick where, how skinny is it? Let's pick a point to the left of the vertex, and let's pick a point to the right of the vertex. Yes? Huh? Because you need to know where, how skinny or, or wide it is. This is dilating it, right? You need to know where it's going. It's not going up one, left one, up one to the right one, up one to the right one. It doesn't have the same features. You're now multiplying it by 3. So let's take a look at it. Let's go over negative 1, negative 2. Let's do negative 3, and let's do 1. So what I'm going to do is my table of values, I'm going to have x, y. So we already know the vertex now has been changed to negative 1, negative 2, right, by our transformations. Then let's take a look at negative 3. So if I plug in negative 3 into my function, y is greater than, well, let's just do equals. We're just going to set it up. y equals negative 3, absolute value, negative 3 plus 1, absolute value minus 2. Negative 3 plus 2 is negative 2. Absolute value of negative 2 is positive 2. 2 times negative 3 is negative 6. Negative 6 times negative 2 is negative 8. So at negative 3, I need to go down to 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. Okay, And then let's check 1. y equals, so negative 3 is negative 8. And at 1, you do negative 3 times to put them in parentheses, 1 plus 1 minus 2. 1 plus 1 is 2. Absolute value of 2 is 2. 2 times negative 3 is negative 6. Negative 6 times negative 2 is negative 8. 
minus 2 is negative 8. Correct. But negative 1 goes down to 8. So by choosing what you need to do, ladies and gentlemen, to revert everything again, we haven't actually, ooh, I kind of jumped ahead because we have, we have, I have to go back and check the inequality. But just on graphing it, you have to make sure that first you know where the translations are doing. What's happening? Shift left, shift right, reflections. Then you find the vertex. Pick a point to the left and right to help you with the dilation. You guys can see this is skinnier than that one, right? I'm not the best artist in the world, but this is skinnier, right? It's been compressed. How do you know how much compressed? Pick some points. Pick a point to the left and to the right of the vertex. Evaluate them and plot them. Connect from the vertex. So that's how you graph it. Now we need to look at, ladies and gentlemen, this doesn't say just graph the inequality. This says graph the absolute value inequality, meaning we need to know what this sign is. If it's greater than, that's going to tell us to either use a dashed or a solid line. Which one? Dashed. So make sure you use a pencil so you guys can make this a dashed line. Or just look ahead before time and know that it's going to be a dashed line. Okay, I got kind of caught up into teaching how to graph it, and I forgot to mention, we're, I forgot to realize we're doing an inequality, not an equation. So this is going to be a dashed line. Now, how do we determine where to shade? Do we shade outside or inside the function? We need to pick a test point. test point. And the best test point ever in the world to pick, as long as your graph doesn't go into it, is zero, zero. zero, zero right? Why make work so hard on yourself? So let's just pick 0 and for y. So I like to put ta I like to do 0, 0, and I do test. So 0 is greater than negative 3, absolute 0 plus 1, minus 2. Put the 0 in for y, 0 for x. 0 plus 1 is 1, absolute value of 1 is 1. 1 times negative 3 is negative 3. Negative 3 minus 2 is negative 5. Is 0 greater than negative 5? Yeah. True. So we write a nice big true. Write a nice big true. So 1, Ms. McLogan knows that you used your test point, you showed your work, and it knows it's true. And then also I know that that means all values outside of the function are going to be true. And all values inside your function are going to be false. And that's what your graph should look like. OK? Ta-da. Yes and then yes. Negative 8? For which one? I didn't get negative 8. I got negative 5. There. How did I get that? I did right here. I plugged in negative 3. So negative 3 plus 1 is negative 2. Absolute value of negative 2 is 2. 2 times negative 3 is negative 6. Negative 6 minus 2 is negative 8. OK, any questions? Yes? Pick any number you want, as long as it's either inside or outside of the function. That's fine, but the problem is, what table of values are you going to pick? See, the thing is, here's, my, here's the problem with just picking table of values. It, let's say you picked your table of values to be negative 1, 0, and 1. Well, what are you going to graph? You're just going to graph a line. You don't have any table of values that are going to graph that side of the graph, right? So how do you know which table of values to pick? You want to pick table of values that are on op You want to pick table of values that are going to get this line and this line of your absolute value equation. You don't know which ones to pick unless you know where the vertex is. Where does the graph change, right? Where is it a V? You have to know that. The only way to know that is to follow your translations. OK? okay so yeah, you did shift to the right, too. Yep. So it's shifting to the left. Yes, you're shifting to the left. Yep. For that. Make sense a little bit? So yes, you can do the table value.